Hello everyone, uh, we've got uh, Darren Dial here with his top stick scene finish here at YCS Vancouver. Please introduce yourself. Hey, so yeah, like Abby said, my name is Darren. I got top 16 at YCS Vancouver with Bistial Dragon Link. Um, kind of my go-to deck I think that people know me for, so we can jump right into the profile. Alright. Okay. So... Um, start off just with kind of some of the more generic cards. One Levy, one Red MD, uh, three Black Metal. I think what you guys will notice is like my deck it revolves more around this with some of the text that I have later on, but I do play the Meteor Black Dragon just because that gives you another extender. And um, yeah, there's some other cool intricacies in this deck. So you guys will see like some really cool stuff, but um yeah these are this is like your main one this one safer is is good don't get me wrong it's a very good card as well but starting wise if you ask me which one i want to start off with more i would choose black metal ahead of safer just because the susceptibility to droll and ash this hurts a lot more the black metal doesn't get hurt by ash because you just chain block it um whereas with safer sometimes that's your only play and and it can hurt you quite a bit so yeah i, I prefer the black metal but safer was great as well uh, one white, one black, uh, two tracer, one recharger, no caliber. I, I think that card is not very good. Um, unlike Ruben, I also didn't play a second recharger uh, because I just don't think that it comes up as much. You can actually bestial this away and then regain it back into the deck. So then if you need to pop with tracer, this gets put back or regained and then you can manage your resources through that. I just don't see a time where another rocket card ever comes up. So I think if you manage your resources correctly, it, it just doesn't, it's not something that really comes up a whole lot. One Napster Outer. And then, so something that makes my deck unique and different in comparison to um, other people's lists is that I'm playing one Lubellion. Here, I'll put it this way so everyone can see one Lubellion, one Magna, one Serenir, and one Druus. So these cards are, are interesting because people play three of this, three of this, two to three of this. I don't know what people are doing with this right now, but it's good against Unchained. But the reason I decided to do this ratio is I wanted to cater to my worst matchups. And I had a feeling that Kishdira would be one of the most played decks or most represented decks. So I decided to... Um, you know, focus more on the weaker decks that I have. Like, so Pearly is a tough matchup. Cash is obviously a tough matchup. You have Rescue Ace, which I was accounting for people to play, and it was there, it showed up. Infernoble was another one, and, and these cards are not good against Infernoble either. There's a lot of decks right now that these cards are not very good against, and then people argue that these cards are engine. I would s argue and say they're more extenders than I would engine. They're not like engine requirements where you need to see these cards sure setting up a regained is nice or setting up an end phase search is nice right but i don't understand how it's technically engine when you can't you you don't really get a whole lot of value out of these especially when your opponent doesn't already have stuff in the grave right especially when you're going um when you're playing second i just think that it makes it a lot harder against matchups like rescue ace and all the ones that i just listed so I decided to play one of each. This was great. Everyone called me crazy. I thought it was great though. And then the one Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. This card was insane. Um, just as like an extender. And it allows you to play one Lubellion because this thing turns into a level seven when you special summon it. So you're able to just sack it off and summon this. There's like a two card combo that you can do where, or not even, yeah, it's a two card, I guess with quick launch and with, um, uh, quick launch and black metal you're able to access basically like a seal savage boral end with a regain so this card was really good and then to accompany this card you play the driver but also what accompanies that card is also the gamma how this many times did you resolve gamma uh, <laughs> i resolved it to get into top 32 uh, all right that was really good that's against patrick hoban no no that wasn't i did resolve it against hoban as well though but um I versus Hoban in top 32. This card did come up because it stopped the DDD. Um, what's the card called? The level, the rank six. 
uh, Caesar, the, the uh, high wave Caesar. Yeah, that yeah. one. So this yeah. card was it's cool. unexpected too, and you drop the camera, right? People expect you not to play it. So that's the thing. Into it easier, right? Exactly, yeah. and and I guess that kind of leads me to this. So I played three nib, and the nice thing about having nib is when people say that you have to nib at a certain time, they only account for you having one hand trap. I was playing a deck that had a lot of hand traps, so I had like three Ash Blossom, three Valor. And then I'll just show this now, the three Imperm. So my deck was like filled with hand traps. And when you draw them in conjunction with each other, all that theory of what you're supposed to do kind of goes down the drain because people think, oh, I, like the what a lot of players were doing is summoning, like when I played against Pack or Hoban, they were summoning out two level sixes because then that way they wanted you to drop the nib early. So then they can just continue to extend and play through it. But because I had these cards in my hand, I didn't care if they already made the, the DDD because I would already have the negate for it. So it realistically, it didn't do anything. And that's why having these cards, I was really happy I played hand traps over board breakers. And I think in Dragon Link, it just makes more sense anyways, to be honest. Um, yeah, just because like the hand traps provide a lot of even when you have to go like it's funny when people say the seals pass but if you have hand traps to back it up you really don't mind but i, I rarely just went seals pass i think unless i i got hand trapped a lot of times and even if i if i got hand trapped a lot of times then i was just ripping cards out of my opponent's hand which is nice mm -hmm. so the other reason why i liked hand traps is small world so i play this card because i wanted to see more um more starters so my deck count is 46 cards and I really liked having Small World in it because it boosted my percentage up of opening a starter. So without these, you're below 80%. With these, you're over 80% for seeing a one card starter. Um, so this card was essentially very good and it works really well with the stats of something like Valor because it's zero defense or zero attack and it's a light, it's a level one. So you're able to access um, Black Metal easier. And then also Nibiru just happens to be 600 defense which is also black metals defense as well so the bridging was very easy and it was convenient because it allowed me to play more hand traps without having to technically give up consistency because that's what people always tend to argue is is that if you're playing hand traps you're giving up consistency i didn't give up consistency i think i just gave up the extenders like the extenders being the bestial cards right mm -hmm. um so that's why I chose to do that. And this card was, everyone kept calling this a tech this weekend and people kept saying it was a really spicy tech. I don't know if I would call it, would you call it a tech? <laughs> I don't uh, know. If well, it's... I consider it, it's a it's a consistency card that doesn't fit in every deck, but when you are playing a, a diverse set of hand traps with correlating stats, it just ends up working out, like in the case with your Nib and the Valor and the Black Metal, right? Yeah. So like, you know, it, it works in some decks, it works in, it doesn't work in others, right? So you, I think you just kind of capitalized on it here. Yeah, um, I think you so took too. Took out inconsistency for more consistency because, like, while playing three Magnemote is great, um, it's better to just like have more options that you can search in the main phase rather than the end phase. That's exactly what I feel like. I feel like it's it's just better. It's a better option, and it was able. It allowed me to get to my engine, and people weren't on Droll that much this weekend um, because Unchained was more of a thing. So this card was actually very good. And then, of course, Chaos Space, Insane, Quick Launch boot ravine regained and beast beast i don't know i it was good when i played against uh, in top 32 when i played against patrick hope and it came up which is funny because you're thinking like how did it come up versus unchained but i was actually able to pop one of the the link cards and the link cards when they're popped don't really do a whole lot they add one from the grave which usually is the red one, Savar, Savar, I think his name is. Yeah, they add it to hand. Design. Yeah. It's a quick effect from hand to pop a card. To yeah. A new phase. yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah. this card, in that situation, like, it's it's okay. Like, if you pop, if you do pop the, um, the Unchained Link monster from linking off even further, and then if they have that, then they still can't really do a whole lot, right? On my mm -hmm. turn, anyways. So, I, I didn't mind having Beast, but I rarely probably went into it. Mm hmm regain this better yeah it was because it was setting up more like giving me more follow-up it works really well when you draw safer by itself and you don't have chaos space and mm -hmm. then you're able to do the babies the black and white dragon yeah, so yeah i'll actually do my extra next um so i did one striker dragon which everyone says should be banned and it shouldn't one pisty everyone says it should be banned which it shouldn't one romulus this is like your effect veiler target like everyone always hits this which i think is correct 
um, one seal, you don't need more. And then I played these two. These were my little texts, and I think I played this, I can't remember what event I played this for, but I, I played this previously as well. I've been huge fans of these two cards, and especially with the Unchained matchup, like I said, when they, all they do with the links is just add cards back to their hand, which isn't really a huge threat. So Quad Boral is essentially Soul Charge, so that's why I, I play play these two. And there's also a combo where you, if you start off with Black Metal and Quick Launch, like I said, you end off on like this really insane board and you need to make these two, right? So these two cards were very, very good, actually. I'm very happy that I played them. Dark, this card's really good. If it's destroyed by battle or a card effect, you can add a Dark Monster with 1500 or less defense, which came up a lot. One Unicorn, very good against Unchained, spins back things and allows you to go for game. Triple Burst, Access Code to go for game. Borlen, people still have to read this card, it's crazy. Um, Savage, card that never came up. Dispater. And then I played in a Tomb, and people might be wondering why I played a Tomb. So I didn't play Baron, and I didn't play, what's the other level 10 one? Baron and, and Chaos, 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 yeah, Chaos, Chaos Angel. Angel. Yeah. So the reason... I didn't play those cards is because I'm playing a low bestial count. So you could be like, oh, well, why did you play a tomb then? Well, the difference between those is I don't, I didn't find myself making Baron and Chaos Angel a lot. And with the tomb, there's a play that you can do off of with Romulus and Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon being a level six. Um, if you Romulus special summon this card out, then, and if you, um, usually when I have Ravine, and if I'm sending a Lubellion, you always send a Serenir first. So then that will get you your other level six in the grave. And then later on, you can um, pissy back the Serenir if you have enough extenders, and then do this into an Atum. And then this will get you into like your rocket package. So this combo was very good for me, and I like this combo a lot. I, every time I resolved a tomb, it it won me the the game, and it was just very good in general of being able to access whatever I needed to, whether safer rocket package, whatever. Like this card was very good, and I'm happy I played it. And it did come up more than like the Baron or the Chaos Angel. And then for the side deck, three mourners because I was kind of worried about um, the rescue ace matchup as well. And I wanted it. I feel like Veilers are kind of good right now. So except against Unchained, I know people argue that, that it's not good. And it, it realistically, it's not. So which is why I, I did side like the other package of like the two Magna, one Druus. Because these, this card is really good against the Unchained. This card is very good against the Unchained matchup. Because they can't link with it. They just lose value. It's very... That happened actually against Patrick uh, in top 32. He linked away with my Druus. I just got rid of his Soul Rage. And he just had a card and had to pass. So, But he had to out this card, right? Otherwise, like, this turns into a Tomb. This one card can lead to, like, so many things if they leave it on board. So these cards were good. But, again, I wanted to cater to my weaker matchups than I did to my, strong, to my stronger matchups. Or my strengths, I guess you'd say. Three talents. I thought this card was really mid this tourney. And I didn't like this card at all, actually. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like these should have been droll. I played against Infernoble, the guy who actually got uh, top eight. So... And I, I wish that these these were drolls Friday night, or sorry, not Friday, Thursday night, because we had to submit our list Friday morning. Thursday night, these were drolls, and I wish I kept them as drolls. I think it would have been better. Three C's Encore, card's insane. And then uh, Cosmic and Feather Duster kind of rarely came up. This came up a few times. I don't think I used these ones, but I did side them. So yeah. So yeah, that's my deck profile. Big shout out to uh, Chansey Squiddy, and I'll thank you for allowing him to do or allowing me to do a Squiddyo. Um, and shout outs to my team, Team Robert Gaming. I forgot their mat today, so I had to use this mat right now that I had. But huge shout out to them, Robbie, um, Will, Ben, Andrew, uh, Josh, John, every just everyone, like everyone who I spend time with this weekend it was such an amazing amazing event huge shout out to avi for recording <laughs> what's up <laughs> a huge shout out to him um he was great and huge shout out to riley as well one of my testing partners um and then the foundation guys tristan danny landon mike at deception who recently joined our foundation chat so super happy for that 
And um, yeah, just shout out to everyone that I met this weekend. It was a lot of fun. I'm super happy that people got to see how beautiful and amazing Vancouver is. I hope they do more YCSs here. Um, this is Vancouver's local to Chansey and I, so I'm very happy that we got to have an event here and hopefully more to come in the future. All right. Thank you, Darren. Thanks. Have a good one.